Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode of our NASCAR Heat 5 Career Mode. I hope you're all having a great day. Today we head to Charlotte Motor Speedway. Fresh off of Auto Club, Late Race Chaos allowed Joey Logano to be put in perfect position dealing with injury to get his first win of the season after Denny Hamlin looked poised to get his first win of the season in his final season. But unfortunately again comes up short. Christopher Bell will miss a second continuous race this episode with injury, but expected to return in the next episode. So just two races departed from the series. NASCAR announced this week big things. First of all, the new tire compounds will come into effect this week. You're going to see brand new Goodyear tires on the car with the yellow stripe as well. Due to the consistent injuries we're suddenly seeing, NASCAR has announced that points will be awarded to the injured driver from the release driver in their performance going forward. So Bell will get all the points that Taylor Gray will get for him uh, and Bubba Wallace has been given the points that the 23 of Corey Heim was able to put up on the board for him as NASCAR has deemed that it's not the driver's fault that they're getting injured in the car uh, due to some issues there. But if a driver gets injured outside of the car, they will not be awarded those points that the relief driver earns them. Another big moment here this weekend, Richard Childress racing with an announcement here in this Coke 600 weekend that Austin Dillon and Kevin Harvick are going to be moving into a leadership role at RCR following this season. Richard Childress himself will be taking a step back and it will be now Austin Dillon and Harvick in a leadership role. So Harvick joining the team not as a driver and Austin Dillon will officially be stepping aside from racing duties in the number three car after winning only a few races in his Cup Series career and early quote-unquote retirement but he will still be of course in the leadership perspective of Richard Childress racing moving forward. The driver lineup to be determined but Austin Hill is expected to still be on the team so that's at least half the team decided but they also uh, apparently are exploring an option to get a third charter we roll through into qualifying for this charlotte coke 600 it's gonna be a lengthy episode because this is a 35 percent coke 600 so i hope you guys are ready to settle in and let me know down below in the comments if you're enjoying longer races and as well enjoying longer videos because this is probably going to be the longest one maybe the second longest compared to the southern 500 that we'll have this season here now a goal of a 29 7 0 one. I really enjoy this Charlotte Raceway and I'm hoping today can finally be that first win as we've continued to have some bad luck thrown at us but we're going to cross the line. It's a little bit off the goal, not quite a tenth off and that puts us P18 here in this Coca-Cola 600 now as the question is of course who's going to be on pole position. We'll scroll up the order and take a look there. Ryan Priest just inside the top 10 pole position. Tyler Reddick in the number 45 for 2311 Racing Chastain P2. Byron Larson Busher all in the top 5 Gibbs Briscoe in the top 10 as well as you see the rest of the qualifying order there's no cup or sorry there's no trucks or Xfinity series this weekend it's only a standalone cup event so with that let's get ready to go racing and head to the pre-show here Sunday evening it's the Coke 600 we're here from Charlotte Motor Speedway for the second crown jewel race of the season a rich history in the central location of NASCAR who will win tonight I was lucky to win here myself before Mike and it truly is a special feeling. I've got my eyes on the Toyotas today. They, they have been figuring out these tracks lately. And I think today is the day they get a win. I'm with you, Kevin. Uh, Redick on pole. My pick is that boy. He will dominate this race tonight. Gary Owen, it's Harvick and the boys in the booth. You got me? I was wondering when you guys would talk to me. Yeah, I got you. Starting 18th today, a long race. What's the goal for tonight? A uh, top five for sure. I think the car is way better in race trims, so prefer preferably a win, but definitely a top five. All right, that car is looking lit AF out there. Good luck. Don't ever say that again at your age, bro. Long race today, Gary. Be patient. Yes, sir, coach. Uh, hopefully I can deliver the first win of the season for you today. We're ready to roll. Daniel Suarez, Ty Gibbs both to the back. Uh, Gibbs failing pre-race inspection. Suarez with a technical inspection issue. You see that yellow stripe there on the tire now. We're ready to test out the new compound here from Goodyear. The green flag is out and the Coke 600 is officially underway. We start now P17 moving up due to Ty Gibbs of course heading to the back of the grid. Now new paint scheme on the track. Sanog whipped up an absolute banger and I think this thing really pumps under the lights here at nighttime which you'll see a little bit later in the episode but you will see it in the replay 
satellite cameras right off the bat as we head down this back straightaway. 140 laps of racing for 35% here. Usually when it's a 25% race, of course, that we were logged into, uh, it was usually 100 laps. So now we've added an additional 40 as we're right on the back of that Coca-Cola machine of Chase Elliott still yet to have seen a repeat winner this season. I think tonight's going to be the night where hopefully we don't see it because I'm thinking we can win this race. Now, if we don't win the race, though, I do believe we will see a repeat winner here from Charlotte. But like we mentioned last episode, a lot of big names that still haven't won. Joey Logano finally adding his name to that list there. He is still racing with a sprained leg. Can he keep that momentum from the win last episode into this one? We'll have to wait and see now as we go to the outside of uh, Chase Elliott down this back straightaway. Ryan Priest going backwards right off the bat there, qualifying inside the top 10, but you can tell that Rick machine not showcasing the speed he needs today we exit turn two will clear the number 15 hunt brothers pizza machine up into the top 10 already in just four laps we've gained seven positions and it wasn't long until we ran down two top 10 qualifiers joey logano and chris busher but it's looking like these two have their cars way better in qualifying trim than race trim because we're going to pass them both now we'll get up the inside of the 17 fast and all four dark horse mustang and we'll clear him on the exit of turn four into the top eight but brad kozlowski is following me through through this grid early on lap six of 34 a lot of laps here in stage one and look at the gap already crash on the exit of turn two alex bowman's gone around there on the ally financial colleague machine and the caution's already gonna fly here from charlotte motor speedway nobody's gonna come into the pits except for the number 30 of christopher tate in that three friends racing car because nobody can make it to the end of the stage if they pitted at this point in time so we're gonna get back underway from eighth position here row number four 25 laps remain so a field run is going to be right about 19 to 20 laps if you really stretch it so we're going to be expecting to probably do 16 to 17 laps if we get into a green flag pit stop scenario uh, which is very possible here today from Charlotte four stages keep in mind not your usual three stages the only race on the calendar that we see four stages so they're all going to be around 30 to 35 laps somewhere in between of course depending on timing of cautions and the end of these stages and whatnot so uh, stage one being 34 laps 24 to go on the outside here into turn number one the early lead right now is in favor of Ross Chastain Reddick, your pole winner, dropped back to second. He's side by side right now up there with William Byron, who we continue to talk about his winless streak. 70 plus and now closing in on 80 race winless streak for William Byron. He enters this race as the points leader. It's not like William Byron's running bad in the Hendrick machine. No, he's running good. He's leading the points, but he just can't find victory lane here now. As we continue on, trying to fight with Denny Hamlin, Kyle Larson as well, and really showcasing early on some of the speed maybe in my car maybe the lack of speed in that Wawa number five because Larson goes backwards on the inside I'm able to pass him on the top here now as we come through three and four look at this side by side battle in front of us Tyler Reddick struggling in this opening stage as I actually caught the wall on the exit of four but uh, William Byron got through in the second runs down Chastain Kozlowski threw into third and Reddick's dropping like a rock here now we pass Kyle Busch we're to the inside of Bubba Wallace now to the inside of his teammate of Reddick now Shane Van Gisbergen end at fourth and we clear the 45 in 15 laps we've gone from 17th to fifth on the grid a great start to this race here where I have a lot of confidence in now of course we've had a lot of bad luck this season a few things of course have been our fault we look at this speeding penalty we took in Talladega a race that we were dominating got a stage win a playoff point it's all about getting as many playoff points as we can before the playoffs of course now so we can enter with a comfortable margin above the cut lines and what not here as we go up the inside of the six pushing Shane Van Gisbergen and we would find ourselves engaged now in a side by side battle with the 2012 Cup Series champ Brad Kozlowski who is still yet to win in this career mode and we would continue this battle side by side from several laps actually here now through three and four one and two we would continue wheel to wheel I'm on the inside he's on the top now he's trying to clear us we are going to side draft him pull him backwards Ryan Blaney directly behind this battle continuing to showcase some pace as a caution is going to fly here for the second time already this is going to force everybody into the pit lane this time for four tires uh Corey Heim actually bringing out the caution in that number 47 and we're going to make some changes for the first time today 
today going up to 50% on the grill tape leaving the wedge at 49.5 but going up to 55 from 50 flat on the right side tire pressure there's the replay there the 47 into the outside wall and the caution would fly for the second time here today so still with this new compound we're still seeing tire failures now and it might seem like we're having more tire failures than normal that's not really the case we're actually having the same amount as normal we just have more access to see it on the replays now because of the free camera mod because think about it the majority of cautions that happened uh before just a few episodes ago when we started using the free camera mod uh we could never see them because we would have to rely on it being in the long replay uh section of the replay system so now we have access to see it all and it seems like there's more tire failures i can assure you there is not here now as we continue through three and four on this restart chastain leads the way coming to 11 to go in stage number one Kozlowski second, Byron third, SVG beside myself. We found ourselves locked into a few battles this season with Shane Van Gisbergen, but exiting turn two, a little bit of a moment on the exit of the corner. Ryan Bellaney to my outside, and he would clear us a lap later on lap 25. Bubba Wallace just behind us, of course, returning from injury, Bubba Wallace did last episode, as it's been the Toyota drivers that have been really getting uh, out of the car this season for injuries, because now, of course, our teammate Christopher Bell out for his second race, but expected to be back in the next episode. Kozlowski fading here in the later laps of stage. Number one, SVG up to second place. He's locked into battle with the 12 of Ryan Blaney, the 24 of Byron, but it's all Chastain leading the way by several car lengths as I'm continuing to struggle to pass as number six of Kozlowski. We were engaged in a battle earlier with him and we continue to fight up the inside here with five laps to go in the stage. We caught the apron. We overcorrected into the outside while we go. Damage done to the right side of the car. It's going to be damage that's repairable, but the damage is done in track position as well. We'll drop down to P10. Reddick slips through on the inside now as we'll try to fight back immediately and still showcasing some strength in this car. We would get to his inside into turn one and we're going to be able to repass this number 45 out of turn two. So we would get back ahead final lap of stage one and we would rally back to run down Kyle Busch and Bubba Wallace but we give up some track position right at the end of this stage that will cost us a few points it's all Ross Chastain here in stage one Bellaney was able to run him down after passing Shane Van Gisbergen but now Chastain wins this first and opening stage an extra playoff point there for the one time race winner this season P9 for us two points on the board I need a little bit more of what you did on the last stop there James maybe on the left sides Yep, I got you here. Bring it to us. So we'll come in, uh, and you can see uh, what we're going to end up doing is actually keeping the right sides the same, and the left sides are going to go from about 20 flat uh, both to about 15 flat. So we go down instead of up like we did on the right side tire here uh, as we'll get ready to go green for stage two. A lot darker now as we will restart P9 in this second of four stages. Keep in mind now as the green flag is back out, Ross Chastain, your stage one winner, will lead us back to the green flag here in that bush light number one. 32 laps of racing in stage number two. Shane Van Gisbergen showing the nose to Chastain. He's going to take his track host teammate three wide. What is Shane Van Gisbergen willing to do to lead one of the most prestigious races in the Cup Series? Exactly that. He shuffles his teammate outside of the top five. Chastain down to P6 on this back straight away appreciate it great teammate right there you hear Chastain's reaction now as we're side by side with him through three and out of turn four nearly into the back of that Menards number 12 of Ryan Blaney and we talked about it I think last episode what a turnaround of a season for Ryan Blaney headed into Talladega he had not finished in the top 10 goes and wins Talladega and now he's been one of the best drivers in the last few episodes he did come up short of a top 10 in Auto Club but it was what P11 after a lot of chaos and he finished the top 10 at Texas and now here he is with a car capable of what appears to be winning uh, again here now as we're starting to go backwards now it really does seem like we don't quite have the car that we need on the short run and on top of that I think we've gone the wrong direction here when it comes to the adjustments. Uh, I think we need to redo the left sides and go back to what we had. 10-4, hang in there for me. Hanging in there is exactly what we're going to do. Now as the laps go on, Shane Van Gisbergen continues to lead and we're running down uh, the Wick Donalds, number 23, whipped up by Tyler Tinsley. Beautiful paint scheme there. Bubba Wallace now. We're going to go to the inside of our Alliance teammate. That is here now and we would continue side by side into turn one, lap 10. Up the track we go. Bubba Wallace gets back clear, but we were clearly faster than him at this point. I mean, everybody in front of him is faster than him. That 23 really struggling, but like Kozlowski earlier, we get locked in this 
this side-by-side -side battle. New leader at this point, Ty Gibbs, who started all the way from the back. He's just kind of quietly worked his way up there. I never even oh, noticed him. Careful. And he's now to the lead over SVG as we continue side-by-side. -side. With the 23 of Bubba Wallace here as we exit turn 4, coming to lap 14, we still cannot get clear of this number 23 as we head down through 3 and 4. Again, lap 14, you can see in our mirror now, Reddick has gotten up here into the mix as well. Contact with the 23. We run Bubba Wallace up into the outside wall. Just a scrape there as we continue on side by side. He's not going to give this up as we head down into turn one and two. He would continue on our door now. Bubba not making it easy as we roll through the front straight away. Now we might have a chance to get clear through the trial with 17 to go in stage two. Finally clear, but look at the damage done. Look at how far ahead everybody else is. And to add on to that, I was verifying the fact that our car is just not where we needed to be after those adjustments because now here goes Tyler Reddick to my inside out, out of turn two and it wasn't long until Bubba Wallace is going to get back up now my inside as we come through three and four the car really starting to kind of just move up slip and slide a little bit off the corner you're going to see it right here out of turn two again lap 18 here comes Keselowski now so this is going to drop us down to ninth place here and now as we roll through four and here comes Tyler Reddick into the pit lane now and that's a bit of an abrupt one and that's going to really hold up Bubba Wallace and Brad Keselowski so we go to P6 and suddenly a two for one special right there as now two laps of fuel in the car but we're not going to be pitting under green because the caution flies and I could not find any reason for the caution under this one I couldn't find it anywhere so we're going to put the left sides back to where they were that's the only adjustment here back to 20 on the tire pressures but a bunch of drivers had been in the pit lane as you saw at the time of the caution so we're going to shuffle backwards as all the cars that were on the pit lane can stay out so now Kaz Grola is going to be the first car that we will be approaching on what will be considered old tires, quote unquote. Now they're not really, they're quite literally the same tires that everybody else is on right now. We get back underway here with 10 laps to go in stage two. We're not even halfway through this Coke 600 and it's already been action packed now. It's John Hunter Nemechek out in front. There's a bunch of slower cars in this race right now up here. Chris Buescher has been off pace all race long. He's up there. I believe maybe the 22 of Logano's up there as well. We're going to take William Byron three wide down this front straightaway past him and Austin Cindric as well. And here we go up the inside of Ty Gibbs. Ryan Priest three wide down this back straightaway. There you see that power raid machine. Logano, I think in this big endurance race is really showing that his sprained leg is causing issues. He has not had any pace here today. Uh, so now we actually go three wide around the outside I was trying to follow Gibbs and that allowed Byron to go up my inside and Bubba Wallace as well So now we would follow them We would get to the inside of Gibbs following these two who was stuck behind the 13 of Chandler Smith So now we'll get back out in front of Gibbs who might be the fastest car here tonight It really does seem like that now as now we come through to these closing moments of stage two coming to lap 28 of 32 There's John Hunter Nemechek Byron's gonna pass him and Austin Hill leads away fresh off the RCR news But he was going backwards. So now Byron to the lead Bubba Wallace to second and myself into third Gibbs got caught up in the traffic really struggled to get through so now it's really just a three horse battle here for the stage win now Bubba to the inside of the 24 with just over three laps to go in stage number two do we have anything for these guys now as we approach lap 30 we got up the inside of the 24 wheel to wheel with Byron but this would continue down into turn three it's so hard to pass these cars or complete these passes here today and we would continue two laps to go down this back straightaway still wheel to wheel with William Byron but Bubba Wallace has not gotten away so don't write off a potential stage win but we have to clear that 24 into turn one otherwise it's over Bubba will win the stage in that fashion now still half a car length ahead now crossing the stripe one lap to go in stage number two as we are just about clear and there we go clear of Byron we sail it deep into the corner so we push a little bit up there on the uh, mid corner but we still have that draft from the 23 Wick Donald's Toyota Camry down the spec straight away it's Toyota 1-2 do we have anything to make a move into turn three? He leaves the inside open a full car with there. We get up the inside to the left rear. We're going to try and pull him back. Sign draft to the line. Who's it going to be? Bubba Wallace or myself? It's going to be a photo finish for the stage. But it's Bubba Wallace and he got it by that much. Oh my goodness. I would have loved to get that playoff point. So that built my confidence 
in the car so we're not going to make a single adjustment we're going to leave the car at what it is on the 50 on the right the 20 on the lefts for the tire pressures and our pit crew gains us a position our pit crew has been fantastic gaining us positions all season and they gain us one to put us in control for the start of the third and final stage here from charlotte motor speedway and now we're going to get amped here from charlotte We're still lacking short run pace, and you see it there. Byron now to the lead. Bubba to second. Kyle Bush for Trackhouse to third. Now we go down to fifth. Gibbs is going to go through, and here comes uh, Shane Van Gisberg up the inside. He would clear us as well down to P6, and we would settle in here. But this car, it just does not fire off. It takes a good five to six laps to really get anywhere. Kyle Bush would quickly drift backwards, and now we're up the inside of that Wendy's Chevrolet Camaro. But now here comes Chastain. Chastain would go around the outside of both of us actually is going to get myself and the 99 and I think Chastain's probably the quickest car that's not the 54 of Ty Gibbs I think we have a top five car at the end of a race but that, that's not really enough to go and actually win this race here as we continue in this battle with Kyle Busch here now when we finally clear him through three and four on lap seven so we'll take P6 Byron continues to lead the race here from this Coke 600 now uh, as we approach the later part of towards the halfway point of stage three and now Ty Gibbs had gotten the lead and he would have driven away by nearly a full second to that 24 of William Byron as we continue to maintain sixth position we're slow reeling in the cars ahead here with 16 to go in the stage but we're also approaching again that green flag pit stop territory well we see a similar situation to what we saw in stage two with some cars in the pit lane as a caution comes out hopefully not uh, but here comes Shane Van Gisbergen into the pits to kick off the cycle for the leaders now lap 18 of this stage so we are about a lap away but no we're not because we're now gonna pit because the caution is out again just as the green flag pit stop is uh, cycle is kicking off however this time we're gonna go do the opposite on the left sides we're gonna crank both left side tires up to 25 psi instead of 15 as denny hamlin brings out the caution due to a blown tire and that's gonna be the end of hamlin's day his final coke 600 comes to an unfortunate end and four drivers were in the pit lane at the time of the caution. Shane Van Gisbergen being one of them. Tyler Reddick's up there now as well as Brad Keselowski. We're back racing here and it's 11 laps to go. I really want to have a chance to make a green flag pit stop cycle happen, but it's just the cautions are coming out at the worst times here tonight now. It seems like we're getting some longer runs. However, now we're going to get the elbows out at stage three, nearly the end of stage three. It's time to go. We took Bubba Wallace three wide. SVG leads the way down the back straightaway. Drone cam going pass right there but up the inside of him now is Tyler Reddick now Austin Hill was up there in P2 he's dropping back now he's really benefited today from pit strategy and, and good timing with cautions Todd Gilliland uh, Toddy G just behind us there in P10 briefly now but we would get past Austin Hill and Kozlowski and settle in to P7 here in these closing laps SVG back out in front Ty Gibbs second Chastain third Reddick fourth but it was SVG continuing to hold on Reddick would drop back to P6 year as once again just like the end of stage two we're slowly rallying forward Ryan Blaney now to the lead here in the closing laps of this stage and here we go to the inside of that monster energy beast number 45 we clear Reddick through turn four Chastain just in front of us in that fifth position but it's Blaney Van Gisbergen Byron Gibbs there just in front of us and now to the inside of that bush light machine can we get past Chastain everyone's kind of gridlocked right here now but we would clear the number one of Ross the boss up the inside of our teammate now of Ty Gibbs 
really leaning on his door approaching these final few moments of stage number three as we both split the 97 three wide an unexpected move from the 54 to the top and SVG banks out of it and loses multiple positions so now with three to go in the stage we're back up into P3 now to the inside of that relay number 24 for second place and down this run straight away we're gonna have a chance to clear the 24 into turn one yes we do back into P2 but Blaney has a comfortable gap we're not quite gonna be able to run him down but we push up the track here comes Chastain to the inside the racing up front has been absolutely fantastic this is what NASCAR racing is really all about side by side action back and forth different lead changes throughout the race several lead changes now as we approach the final lap of stage three but now Ty gives up my inside he would clear us as well so we drop back down to fourth place the two fastest cars maybe Blaney's the fastest he's gonna lead the way out of turn four Ryan Blaney continues his just sudden surge of momentum he will come through to win stage number three P4 for us here in this third stage that's the best of cards felt so far if we can keep going in that direction we can win okay I'm gonna raise the uh, the left sides a bit more here you hear that there so the left side tire pressures will increase a bit further so earlier they were down to 15 they went back to 20 because that was the wrong direction we go to 25 it's the best they felt now we're gonna go about 27 and a half as the right sides they're staying at 55 for the rest of the race and the wedge right now has not been touched it's still at a 49.5 as uh, we get ready to go Colton Hurd I forgot to mention he's in the field here tonight but it's been a pretty disappointing run for the IndyCar star uh, his second NASCAR Cup Series start he's in that Andretti number 98 right, we gain one spot in the pits again that puts us at row two inside line alongside Ty Gibbs we're back underway it's the third or sorry the fourth and final stage it's 33 laps of racing it's time to get the elbows out to the back of Ryan Blaney he leaves half a lane I show the nose but it's not going to be enough he shuts the door we catch the apron that's going to really slow our mom momentum down Ryan Blaney in that number 12 leads the way down the back straight away but Chastain will move through into second place and Shane Van Gisbergen will get clear for fourth as Ty Gibbs moves through into that third spot now so we drop down to fifth place and we know the short run is really where our car is lacking pace compared to those specific cars in front of us they've been kind of the, the four quickest cars early on but look at this out of turn two really washing up the track and here comes William Byron in the number 24 to the inside I actually back out of it so I can get back in line behind the 24 but we continue to struggle as this car is really plowing tight on the exit of turn two the car is in front of us driving away and now here comes Tyler Reddick in the 45 to the inside we are clearly in trouble in this fourth and final stage that adjustment on the left is terrible we got to go back you hear my feedback to our crew chief of James Small. We continue to go in the wrong direction. Kislowski, Kyle Bush, Bubba Wallace all through. We drop down to P10. The reality is we need exactly that. A caution is going to fly here from Charlotte Motor Speedway. James, we need to pit. We need to pit right here. Uh, we can't make it from here, mate. I, I don't care. We're going to continue to drop. We need to pit. We'll give up all the track position and have to still pit again. Are you sure? 100%, dude. We got to bring it. So you hear the conversation atop of the pit box. We're going to come back in and we're going to go 24 on the left sides and lower the wedge. We're going to give up all track position. We're 27 points or 27 positions down for the restart. The only way this is really going to work for us is if we get a green flag run right here. Gain as many positions as we can uh, before the next sequence of pit stops and whatnot. So not the ideal position to be in, but we clearly, I mean, went the worst direction we could have gone on the uh, tire pressures. And we only went up by a couple of PSI on both the left sides and it made a huge difference. So we've gone from 27 now back to 24 uh, and lowering the wedge as well to just free this car up a bit further and hoping that this is going to be a, a opportunity to get ourselves back in the show. We are moving forward very quickly. Lap 117, we're making it three wide. Carson Hosevar and that Golden Corral uh, Andretti machine going backwards. We're passing Austin Dillon, of course, to be soon a future leadership role at that RCR team. We would pass Taylor Gray in the number 20, his final race in that 20 before going back as a regular in the lower series. But we are absolutely flying, passing Chase Elliott, Todd Gilliland having a solid run. We knew that front row was going to start to run better with now some more upgrades coming to that team. And they're showing it here 
here today. We found ourselves now in a three wide battle. We're all the way back up to 13th place. Keep in mind, we were P10 when that caution came out. We do have a tire advantage, which is exactly why we're moving forward at the pace that we are, but we are really getting the elbows right out here to get into that top 10. Justin Haley in the number 60 there runs P9. We're still three wide middle between Bush and his former car in that number eight. Austin Hill, of course, Cup Series Rookie of the Year contender, uh, but we'll pass these guys. We'll get up the inside of Haley. Ryan Blaney still leads the way, but we get up into P9. We need to hope it stays green here on lap one in 22, but that's not, not what's going to happen because the eight into the outside wall, the right front tire goes down. Austin Hill brings out the caution, but we still rallied to ninth, which is good. We make a very slight adjustment from a 49-4 on the wedge to a 49-3. We gain two spots in the pit lane. A great job by the pit crew to give us a fighting chance with four fresh tires and the closing what will be 15 laps of this race. Ryan Bellini leads the field back to green alongside Ty Gibbs, my teammate there, Chastain, Byron Row 2, SVG, Bubba Wallace Row number 3, the 24 up the track and look at the momentum we gain now through the center of 1 and 2, up into the top 5, down this back stretch. We're going to pull out a line, force the 97 to back out of it. Shane Van Gisbergen drops back up into 4th place we go. What a restart from P7 to P4, but we know the short run is where this car struggles. That's still going to be the case, but this is feeling like immediately the best it's fired off all race along. James Small has put us into a position where we can fight for the win potentially here today. SVG back into fifth as we continue fourth place. Blaney, Chastain, Gibbs, myself in the 97, but Chastain to the inside of the 12 and to the lead goes Ross the boss looking for his second win of the season. Maybe his biggest win, of course, at a crown jewel here in this Charlotte Motor Speedway now as we continue to fight with Gibbs. Clear is Chastain. Blaney back down to second and we are door to door with that number 54 Toyota down this front stretch but just not enough in it. Out of turn two. Gibbs still side by side with us. A little bit of contact leaning on his left rear. We continue wheel to wheel. Chasing him up the track on the exit of four. We continue to struggle on the short run. SVG is going to take us three wide. He's not backing out of it. He's won on an oval once in his Cup Series career already. That was Kansas last season. We back out of it. SVG gets clear but we need to clear that 97 if we're going to have any chance to go and uh, fight with this long run pace. 10 laps to go in this Coca-Cola 600. No guarantees of a caution from this point on, that's for sure. 9 to go up the inside of this 97. We need to clear him, and we need to clear him now. We're going to sail it off into turn 1, trying a slide job on the New Zealand driver, and we go a little bit too far, trying to commit to it into the outside wall. I tried. I needed to clear him there. I tried. Keep pushing, anything can still happen here. It's so hard to pass today, and I, I just went for a slider. It didn't work. We don't. We haven't had a car capable of winning this race, but I want to win this race. That's the big thing now. We haven't had the quickest car. It's Chastain and Gibbs, but now Chastain is running away as Blaney defends over the 54. We're back to the inside of the 24 with 7 to go, showcasing that after a handful of laps, this car is really able to start taking off now. And here we go, trying to clear this number 24. We might have a chance here on the exit of turn 2. We're going to wash up the track a little bit, and we're going to force the 24 to back out of it now. Into the top 5 we go again and immediately setting our sights again on that Red Bull machine. Shane Van Gisbergen, a great run there for him tonight under the lights here in Charlotte and as we approach four laps to go we have gotten to the back of this 97 caution flies again here in Charlotte. It's going to go to overtime to determine a Coke 600 winner and you can see up ahead that smoke pouring out of the back of the 38 of Riley Herbs now as he brings out the caution due to a tire issue. We're going to be row three inside I don't think we're going to have a chance to win this race, but we are going to be lining up behind our Joe Gibbs racing teammate of Ty Gibbs. So if we can't win, we can at least try to help our teammate of Gibbs now. Right, Chastain, Blaney, Gibbs, Van Gisberg, and myself. The top five as the green flag is out and overtime is underway here from Charlotte. Who's going to get the job done? Odds are going to be, of course, in favor of that one car who's in control into turn one. Gibbs not quite aggressive enough to force it three wide. He's going to stay in line behind that number one bush light machine. Blaney drops back. The outside has not been where you want to be all race long for a restart. Now he's in a really awkward position. We're side by side with the 97 on the 
run down into turn number three. Here we go up the inside into turn number three. Blaney three lanes up and Gibbs follows through. We're going to get a good run on the exit of turn four, but not quite good enough. White flag is waving. Here comes Gibbs now to the back of the number one. Chastain, will he shut the door? We go up the inside. We get right to the back of the 54 and Gibbs to the inside of Chastain. He left the door open for Gibbs. A repeat winner has to be on the way. All the top three with a win this season and myself looking for the first win. We're not quite close enough. It's a two by two drag race into turn three for the final time here in Charlotte. Gibbs with half a car length on Chastain and clear on the exit of turn four. We'll get Blaney as we exit turn four. Ty Gibbs will win his second race of the season in the Coke 600 as we'll have to settle for third place as Ty Gibbs is going to be the one that gets to celebrate his first time winning a crown jewel event in his NASCAR Cup Series career. What a race. A great race. You see the top 10 there. I mean, all track house cars in the top 10. Kozlowski actually putting two of the RFK machines in the top 10 as well. Only 100 car in the top 10. Larson in 13th. Elliott 15th. How about Corey LaJoy? 21st, sadly, is one of his better finishes uh, of recent times. And you see the rest of the uh, finishing order. And uh, towards the bottom uh, with DNFs, you got Bowman, Herbst, uh, Hamlin, as well as Heim. Bowman's luck. It doesn't matter where he goes. He just has the worst luck with mechanical issues in NASCAR Heat 5. Uh, he's should be higher in the points significantly. And now looking at the playoff grid, Bubba Wallace is the last driver currently in the playoffs, but you as well look at the actual regular season standings to see how things change up and, and whatnot. Uh, but I mean, for us, we continue in this close fight with William Byron. Of course, just 10 points separate us going into the next episode uh, of this career mode. So uh, it's been a heck of a season so far. Still coming up short of that first win. I mean, tonight was the best we've looked at a mile and a half and we made some big momentum gains. I think and hopefully we can carry that into the next episode. I'll see you guys then. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.